McGregor, who avenges the loss at UFC 196. And we are headed out to Vegas now, joined by Gilbert El Nino Melendez, who joins us live here on Sports Center. Gilbert was in the corner of Nate Diaz of this fight, but also obviously an analyst for us. So I will uh, ask you this question with that uh, as an introduction here, Gilbert. Did the judges get it right? You know, it was a very close fight. It was a it was a beautiful fight. Both guys showed heart, warriors. In my opinion, I believe Nathan won the last three rounds, which are the most important. It was very close. It was a matter of one round in this fight, 47-48. Two judges, one judge called it 47-47. Nate's notorious as a slow starter, and he comes on stronger at the end. But it's a very close fight. Could have went either way, in my opinion, but I did have Nate win in the last three. Certainly, it seemed like McGregor won at the very least the first round, likely the second one as well. So Gilbert, what did Conor McGregor do well enough in the judges' eyes to win this fight? You know, Conor McGregor fought a very tactical fight. He didn't push the pace too much. He picked his shots perfectly, and he capitalized and landed some really good ones on Nate. And from there, he kind of ran with it and was able to knock him down a few more times. And that's what kind of gave him that, that big lead, I believe, on one judge's scorecards. And, um, and he also landed the leg kicks as well. Um, and, he and he paced himself re really well to last the fight because I believe he did lose momentum in the fight, but he left enough in the tank to survive and to win the scorecards. And it was a great fight on both guys. It certainly didn't look like he would have enough left by the end of the third round. He looked gassed, but he found enough in the fourth round it looked like to come back in this fight. We, we will talk about just the second career win by decision for Conor McGregor in just a moment. But this was McGregor. Gilbert, I want you to listen to this following the fight, talking about the possibility of a third showdown with Nate Diaz. I gave him number two the second day, so I'm ready to go again. All right, so Nate Diaz saying he's willing, no uncertain words, to do it uh, for a third time. Gilbert, of course, you've been in camp with Nate Diaz. You were in his corner tonight. McGregor says he wants the third fight to be at 155. Is Diaz willing to go to 155? Absolutely. You know, everyone's been talking about McGregor fighting the bigger 170-pounder. pounder. But Nate Diaz is a 155 pounder. He is a lightweight. He's number four in the world as a lightweight. So he's going to go back to that weight class. And whoever wins that fight will most likely get a title fight. So yes, I think this is a great thing. This is actually a great thing for both of them. Even though Nate lost this fight, he's a winner. Why? Because he gets a third fight with Conor McGregor. Two of the biggest stars in UFC, if not the two biggest stars, are going to do it again three times. I'm excited for that. Who doesn't want that? You know, after the uh, fight, there was, a, there was a cool moment we saw in the ring. Gilbert, you uh, and Nate put your heads together. You said something to Nate at that point. What, can you share with us what you told him? You know, we just I, I told him he's a warrior. I told him that was a, a, a beautiful performance. You know, for us fight fans that really understand the sport, it was like watching a, a ballet or a symphony if you really know the tactics that is going on there. These guys are in so much chaos and maintaining composure. And I just told him he's a warrior. I feel like he won that fight. And that was a great show. And he's the man for that. So, you know, that's my brother out there. I was proud of that performance. There's no shame in that at all. Listen, for, for you, you said a mouthful right there, Gilbert Melendez. No shame in what either one of those men did tonight. That's Gilbert Melendez joining us. Uh, from Vegas tonight on the night that Conor McGregor avenges his loss in UFC 196 to come out with a win here in UFC 202 tonight. And we are joined again by our pal Frankie Edgar here. You heard uh, Gilbert mention that Nate it would be willing to fight at 155. So they fought, uh, if they fight at 155, if in fact that does happen, the advantage there goes to, to I me, mean, I would think McGregor, right? Well, yeah, I think you would think that just because he's the, the smaller guy. But like, like uh, Gil said, Nate's really a 55-pounder. That's where he's had the most success. He's ranked number four there. So I still think it's kind of a toss-up. I think it's, uh, you know, they're going to both have to cut weight. They're both going to have to struggle a little bit. I guess it's going to see who can make the best adjustments for the next one. As we sort of take a deep breath here after diving right into what was an unbelievable fight, I want to I go back to just the overarching theme of this fight, which was two men who, if we believe what we saw in the pre-fight news conferences, who don't like each other very much, 
giving us 25 minutes of fury. How, as, as, a, as one of the best in the game yourself, how would you describe the heart that we saw from both of these guys tonight? It, it was amazing to see. You know, a lot of big fights that, that come up usually never live up the hype, and this absolutely lived up the hype. These guys are both bloody. They left it all in the cage. You know, we all got to tip our hat to both of them. You know, win or lose, I don't think there's any losers in that one. They're going to probably run it back for a very lucrative third fight, and the fans are going to win again. The biggest reason that Conor McGregor won this fight tonight was what? I think he, he just had the better game plan. He came out smart. He was able to weather the storm in the middle and have enough in the tank to, to finish it off. How difficult is it for a, a knockout puncher like Conor McGregor? I mean, he's got two majority decisions in his career, including tonight. So how difficult is it to to adopt that sort of a game plan in a fight of this magnitude? It's tough, you know, and you could see uh, Connor tagged him early in the first and second. You could see he was really trying to put him away, and usually in the past he would let it all out to put him away, and, he did, and if it didn't work out for him like it did last fight, he gassed out and didn't have enough. In this fight, he, he just kept just enough in the tank so he didn't blow, you know, totally let everything out and have not, not enough to finish the fight. This time, he was much more smarter in that aspect. We, we gave so much credit to both guys after the first fight. I think we gave a lot of credit to McGregor for coming up in weight uh, and, and performing and being willing to take that risk. How about the credit to Nate Diaz for taking some of the punches he took in this fight tonight? Yeah, Nate's a warrior. Um, not surprised by his performance one bit. You know, he's been in this game for a long time and turns out good performance after the next. And uh, he left it all in there. He was a bloody mess and he was ready to go. You know, he really turned it up and he faced a lot of adversity. So uh, I'm sure he's looking for, forward to a third fight. By the way, what's been left out of the discussion here because of the magnitude of this fight and those two fighters was the knockout punch that Anthony Johnson threw in the undercard. I'll tell you, that guy's amazing. Um, I, I, he might be able to knock out King Kong. <laughs> that guy has such power in his hands, and uh, yeah, it, that's going to be a good rematch for him in D.C. Well, Frankie Edgar, great to have you here breaking it down for us on a night that Conor McGregor again goes up and wait to fight Nate Diaz, wins a majority decision victory in Vegas. We will be heading out to Vegas much more throughout the night here on SportsCenter. Trilogy, it's on my terms. Come back down to 155, we'll do it. I gave him number two the second day, so I'm ready to go again. All right, let's bring in now Gilbert Melendez, who trains with Nate Diaz, was in his corner on Saturday night, joins us from Las Vegas. Gilbert, first of all, let's talk about the result of the fight, because this was an absolute battle between two warriors. Did you agree with the outcome? You know, both of these fighters did a great job, and they're both winners at the end of the night. No, but I did not agree with that outcome. I do believe Nate Diaz won those last three rounds. That second round was great. And a couple of those moments at the end of those rounds, I felt like he almost had the finish there. And at the end, he landed up on top. And if there were more rounds, I believe it was going to go Diaz's way. But I do understand how the cards went the other way. It was a matter of one round in this fight that could have went the other way. In my opinion, my teammate won by one round. But in others, Connor won by one round. So... No shame in this loss for any of those guys. They're both winners in my book. It looked like about halfway through the fight, maybe into the third, start of the fourth, that Conor McGregor really started to get his second win. Did it look like that from uh, the Octagon side? You know, both of these guys have an energy bar, and it comes and goes, and you got to be careful that you don't waste all of your energy. Once your energy bar is down, your chin goes. So I think Conor McGregor did a great job of working his energy bar down, but letting it recharge up. And Nathan Diaz did it the same thing. So you see these exchanges where he's going for the finish, but just this reality, you have to take a little bit off because you got to have it in the tank for the later rounds. So it was a back and forth fight. It depends what you think, who had the better moments in the later rounds and those extra rounds. And I thought Nathan did with this punch combination. Nations. Uh, Gilbert, rare is the time that fight fans want to see two fighters go at it for a third time. But both fighters seem to want to do it for a third time. Connor wants it at 155. Could you see that happening? Yeah, absolutely. Everyone's been talking about Nathan Diaz being this huge 170 pounder, but he's a 155 pounder. He always has been. They just fought 150, 70 pounds for that first fight, and now this second. He's ranked number four in the world, not at 170s, at 55s. He's fought for the UFC title at 55s, so he will make 155s, and they'll both fight at that weight class. No problem. Nate is happy with that. All right, very good. We'll see when they're going to schedule that. It seems like it's a matter of when, not if. Gilbert Melendez with the very latest from Las Vegas. Let's bring in now Frankie Edgar here. Here in studio in Bristol breaking news just coming out that Conor McGregor Frankie suffered a broken foot during this fight and continued and pretty clear to see how that could have happened because there was just constant leg kicks to the side of Nate Diaz's right leg did you think his game plan was on point yeah I think when he came out he did exactly what he needed to do he needed to 
be calculated and definitely keep uh, that leg kick distance. And he, I believe he threw 20 leg kicks and probably broke his foot on one of them. But, yeah, I thought he picked his spots well. And like, like uh, Gil was saying, he didn't let that, his energy zap his energy too early on. You never want, you know, fighters to make excuses, and these two guys did not. Now, Nate Diaz did say in his post-fight interview that he had a bad rib, but he never said anything. Conor McGregor should have finished me off. Conor McGregor suffers a broken foot. When you hear those two things... Does that take this fight to an even higher level than what we watched? I think it does. You know, if Nate, Nate kind of did look maybe a little flat at, at some points in that fight and, and Connor maybe stopped throwing that leg kick because of covers his foot and you give guys, the, you know, those tools back and the fight can only be better. It came out uh, before the fight that this is the highest uh, base pay that the UFC has ever seen. Conor McGregor gets $3 million, Nate Diaz at $2 million, far more than that with the pay-per-view buys. It makes business sense to see this fight a third time. Why would Conor McGregor want to bring it down to 155 for people who may not understand that? Well, Conor's the 45-pound champion, and, uh, you know, I think he's naturally mild, probably a 55-pounder along with Nate. Uh, you know, they just really didn't cut weight for this fight. They're both probably naturally around 170, 175. They cut minimal weight to get down to, to the welterweight. At 55, is probably more, more natural for them. And I, I think Nate, or Conor rather, probably thinks he'll have more advantage down at 55. Joe Rogan said before this fight that if Conor McGregor can perform like this, that not only he can get back the mystique he had before, but maybe gain some. What did you make of Conor McGregor not only standing there taking the shots, almost looking like he was going to get knocked out, and then come back and win this fight in five? Yeah, I think he proved a lot to, to a lot of people, including myself. You know, you've seen his last fight, he kind of packed it in against mm -hmm. Nate, got tired and kind of, you know, took a shot because he didn't want to get dropped and, and kind of, kind of, you know... He gave, gave, back. gave Nate gave Nate the fight. And this yeah. fight, you know, he, he back was against the wall. He got his second win and found a way to, to make it out with his hand raised. When you have a fight like this, and for me, this is one of the greatest fights that I've ever had. You've had your wars uh, as well. What can it do for both fighters to be able to walk out of a fight like this and say, you know what, not only we're going to do it a third time, but we're probably the two biggest names still, regardless of who won or lost. Yeah, it's just a boost of confidence for both guys, you know, knowing that they can put it in there, they put everything they, they, they uh, train for out in that cage. It's only the fans are just going to be screaming for that third fight. It's just more money for them, more eyes on them. It's just good for, for business all around. All right, Conor McGregor wins in a majority decision. Just a great night uh, in Las Vegas. Frankie Edgar, thank you very thank much. You.